Hello YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, this is the first time that I have attempted this type of construction. Uh, I think of it as dead bug construction because you'd put chips upside down and they'd look like dead bugs, but I guess they call it Manhattan construction. Anyway, all the years that I've been building stuff, I've never tried to build something this way before. Uh, it's kind of fun, but uh, as you can see, components stand off the copper of a PC board for all your ground points, because ground points are usually the most common connections in a circuit. And that gives you the physical structure to mount everything on, and then everything else is just connected up. This is a mini whip. Okay, now a lot of you know what these are. They've been around for several years, 10 years maybe. Um, here is the schematic. Let me throw that up on the screen of the mini whip along with the call sign of the gentleman that invented it. And it's his claim to fame. So what this is, is an active antenna. Now this piece of copper here, and you can see for scale, there's my hand, all right? There's my hand so you can see the scale. This piece of copper PC board, and I've cut it here to separate it, this is the actual antenna, and that's all there is to it. That's the size of it, right? Tiny. <laughs> you can put this in a piece of PVC and uh, put it outside. And uh, what it is, is an, an RF amplifier, um, very high gain RF amplifier. This is a JFET that's connected to the, uh, the piece of the copper that's the antenna. And uh, it's a preamplifier that then uh, hits another transistor that is the RF amplifier that then drives the signal up the cable. Now this is powered by DC on the cable. Okay, so you would normally have a decoupled DC power source of 9 to 12 volts driving this. And what I am doing is I am trying to use on the second RF port of the SDR play, uh, they have an output of a bias voltage that you can switch on for here. Now it's only about 5 volts, 4.7, 4.8, something like that, uh, that's going to come up the coax to drive this. So the gain on this amplifier is probably not what it would be on the uh, the normal mini whip where you'd have a 12 volt source and I still might build a, a separate power supply for it and uh, go that route I just wanted to experiment with the SDR play and the mini whip design and see how effective it is now sitting down here on the bench with it um, which I'm in a basement I'm four feet below the surface of the ground I was copying guys on 80 meters um, which surprised me but I'm gonna take it upstairs I'm going to hook it up to the big computer and I'm going to put this up in the window. And then uh, we're going to see how well it receives and what a difference it makes when you turn on the bias voltage to activate the RF amplifier. So, mini whip experiments. I've always wanted to build one of these. Never gotten around to it, but since the uh, SDR Play had that bias voltage capability on that port, I thought, why not? Take the plunge, build one and see how it does. If it does well enough, I might... Uh, put it outside in an enclosure and actually use it as my receiving antenna for the SDR play. We'll see. So let's go upstairs and uh, let's see how it does. Well, okay. Mixed results. Interesting results, but mixed. I'm not quite getting the gain I expected out of the Mini Whip. Now, probably that is due to the SDR play only providing 5 volts of uh, bias vol or power for the uh, amplifier. Now obviously it can only provide 5 volts because that's the power coming into it on the USB port. That's all it's got to work with. Um, I'll show you here, okay. Uh, I've got Qubit going. I've got it on a local uh, AM station. We hit the old bar on Ooh, Sunday, wow. okay. and a snippet of the incident is on video. A couple of sports guys talking about sports stuff. Um, which I guess sports guys like to talk about is sports stuff. Anyway, um, it's a fair signal. You know, we got a nice clean signal with a, a, a good contrast here to the background noise. You know, look at that signal peak just banging in there, right? 
So uh, I'm going to switch. I'm on the dipole right now. This is the uh, uh, dipole up in the attic. I'm going to switch to the mini whip. Okay, that's the mini whip. And we have no hint of that signal. Now let me turn on the bias voltage to the uh, amplifier. And now we got that signal. Barely. I actually have to turn up the RF gain Oh, wait. And we can barely hear them. But they're there. And if I turn off the bias voltage, they go away. So the amplifier is working. Um, it's definitely working. I'll turn the bias voltage back on. And there's our signal. Not very strong at all, but it's there. I suspect that if I built the power supply side of the mini whip and provided it with 12 volts, um, we'd get a lot better result. I might be able to adjust in the schematic the, uh, the biasing resistors on the uh, amplifier, the transistor that's amplifying the signal to drive it up the line. Um, probably is just not reaching a high enough uh, voltage on the base to really do its job. While exploring the uh, biasing issue, I measured the voltages and the bias voltage under that circuit that I found on the transistor amplifier was way high, 3.6 volts, um, turning it on hard. It doesn't leave the transistor much headroom to amplify a signal in. So, uh, I had a 5 volt source, and similar to my Duino Vox, uh, so I uh, looked at my resistor values on the amplifier, the audio amp, and the Duino Vox, and I changed the one resistor that provides bias voltage to the base of that transistor to a 33K resistor. And that brought the bias voltage down to a more reasonable level, just under 2 volts. So, I hooked up the Mini Whip again, and uh, we did some more gain tests, and... Uh, it just doesn't do as well as a dipole. Um, not, not even close, really. I mean, there is amplification there, uh, but uh, with that little tiny piece of PC board as the capture area, just not that much. Um, what I think I might do, though, uh, is, a, is a wideband RF amplifier powered by the SDR Play, it's good. So what I think I might do is build that RF amplifier into a base with a telescoping whip on it and just make an active whip antenna for shortwave receiving. And I think that it'll work well in that scenario. Um, but while I was experimenting, I ran across something else when I was in Cubic and I thought I'd show this to you. So here we are and we are tuned to 15 megahertz with WWV. Now if I unmute this... Okay, so there's WWV. Now... Turn the volume down. I am in sideband mode on purpose because you see how the audio signal here is bouncing up and down? Remember when I talked about zero beating in another video? This is a good example of it. The SDR play is just slightly off frequency. I'm tuned to exactly 15 megahertz, but what you're seeing there is the, the beating between the SDR plays um, local frequency and WWV, so we're slightly off frequency. And in fact, if I increase that by one hertz, now you can see that beating slowed down. We're almost to zero beat. I increase it by one more, and we're pretty much zero beated. Now you can still see a very slight, see it fall down and come back up, and fall down and come back up. We're just a fraction of a hertz off, but there's a really good visual representation of uh, what zero beating is all about. If I go further off frequency, you can see that going up and down much faster. I get far enough off, we'll start to hear the tone.
There's the tone. So, you know, by ear, um, by ear, it might sound like we're zero beaded there, but we're not. You can see that bouncing up and down. I get right to 15, and all right, we're a couple of hertz off. And there we go. Now it's moving up, moving down, swinging back up, swinging back down, real nice and slow. So <laughs> there's a nice visual. There's a nice uh, a visual uh, representation of uh, what zero beating is all about. I thought that was an interesting thing. So anyway, this is uh, done with the part one of experimenting with the mini whip. Um, I'm going to rebuild the RF amplifier into a small base with a telescoping whip on it and see how it works as just an active shortwave antenna, but that'll be another video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.